We are definitely shying away from using quinolones and advocating for using safer antibiotics first. That's because of their rare but serious side effects which include tendinitis, prolonged QTC, altered mental status and delirium, peripheral neuropathy, increased LFTs, and believe it or not, some studies mention that quinolones increase the risk of aortic dissection and rupture. Another reason also, they have multiple drug interactions. So think of using other safer antibiotics first. Quinolones are bactericidal and active against both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Only moxifloxacin has a clinically significant anti-anaerobic activity. Delafloxacin is the only quinolone with a reliable clinical activity against MSSA and MRSA and can be used for the treatment of skin and soft tissue infections. Other quinolones are not active against MRSA and not reliable against MSSA as resistance can develop quickly. Also, they are not active against enterofoxide. Quinolones, specifically ciprofloxacin and levofloxacin, are the only oral agents active against pseudomonas. Quinolones are not active against ESBL producing bacteria. Respiratory quinolones, including levofloxacin, Floxacin, gemifloxacin, moxifloxacin, they are effective as monotherapy for community-acquired pneumonia because they have high activity against trypneumo, legionella, and mycoplasma pneumonia. Remember that ciprofloxacin is not a respiratory quinolone and should not be used for community-acquired pneumonia. Respiratory quinolones can also be used as the second-line treatment after Bactrim for stenotrophomonas maltophilia infections. Please avoid using quinolones in pregnancy, lactations, children, and myasthenia gravis. All quinolones come in oral and IV forms. Renal adjustment is required in all of them. No hepatic adjustments required. They have good oral bioavailability in general. Specifically, levofloxacin oral bioavailability can reach 200%. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.